Ooh. Starting a little early, or than expected. Feeling a little bit run down today, so I'm trying to get some coffee and get this. Just do this a little earlier. I'll just wait for, you, for people to pile in. Give me a second. I'm going to post on Instagram. Mm. Ace? No. Go ahead. If anybody's got a question, it's just going to be general. Any general diet and training questions, um, just ask them. Come on. Live now. Uh, all right. So I just want to go over something quickly first. So I started taking, so this week, actually, um, in two days, I'm going to be filming with Elliot Hulls again. Um, his channel is called Strength Camp. A lot, of, a lot of people are familiar with Elliot Holes. So I guess every week um, I'm going to be taking him through a high-intensity training workout. So Elliot, I met Elliot like a year and a like year and a half ago at the 21 convention and talked about training a little bit. And I uh, was telling him some interesting training, I guess we'll call it philosophy, and he was intrigued. So 
I ended up taking them through a f- few workouts since then, and um, they were so good that he wants to do almost exclusively high intensity training. And um, he noticed that he wasn't able to do the training as effectively on his own. So um, I'm going to coach him. So we're going to film it on Wednesday and should be up maybe a week after that. So be on the lookout on Strength Camp. I'll post it on my channel too. For the uh, workouts that I put Elliot Holster, you're going to get a really good example of how these uh, should be performed. All right. So I get this question a lot. Keep in mind, guys, um, I've answered this question so much that it's not even beating a dead horse at this point. That horse has biodegraded and turned into a different fucking animal at this point. So that horse is now a 2,000-year-old oak tree, which is how much I've answered this question. Two versus three, it doesn't matter. I mean, the research is show, showing that there's no difference. There's almost barely a difference in one really intense workout versus two, and literally no difference in two versus three. So whatever the hell you want to do, really. Um, And the reason people obsess over this is because they think that if they can tolerate a third workout per week, that they're somehow missing out on gains. Well, you're not. If you could possibly tolerate more workouts per week, it's not really going to get you to your genetic limit any faster. Maybe like one, two, three percent faster. So is it worth the extra time, the extra time for the workout, the time driving to the gym, blah, 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 for a couple percent faster journey to your genetic limit? Because it's not going to raise your genetic limit. So I think, you know, a lot, a lot of, I think the reason I get this question a lot is people are very eager and impatient to get to their physique goals. And it's natural, I guess, to want to get there as fast as possible. So people tend to obsess over volume and frequency and all this nonsense that doesn't really make a difference guys this is how rich i am i'm gonna use a five dollar bill as my coaster no i'm just kidding (laughs) um so i think uh you know i guess it's natural to be really eager to get your physical but you know you got to keep in mind this is a slow process and there's no way for you to speed it up unfortunately your, your body is going to adapt at the rate your body chooses to adapt. The only way to speed it up is steroids. And for most people, steroids are just going to make you look puffy and weird. And you're, you're just going to look like a bigger, puffier version of your old self. So you got to keep in mind that this is, especially, you know, I get, there are a lot of people, I used to get a lot of women clients who would, you know, coming to me at 53, 54 years old, not doing shit since they were 20 and want to get super lean in like three months. Like, well, okay, you spent 25 years, 35 years doing absolutely nothing. You think you're going to undo that in just a couple of months? Unfortunately, that's not how it works. So when it comes to the minutia, like volume, frequency, whole body, split, whatever. The truth is none of that's going to make a noticeable difference. Your body is going to respond at the rate that your genetics will allow. Also, keep this in mind. The goal of the workout really is to turn on. So the, the stimulant 
the stimulation is the intense muscle fatigue. And, and we're doing this intense muscle fatigue to hopefully turn on particular genes that result in myofibrillar hypertrophy or muscle growth. But that does not mean that every time we train, we turn these genes on. Okay. So another thing is, you know, muscle growth or, or improvements is not steady. It's not linear. Most workouts probably won't stimulate anything, especially when you get more advanced. You might have like workout, 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 like three, four workouts in a row that do nothing. And then one that actually stimulates. So you're the, the goal of the, the workout is to try to stimulate. That doesn't even mean you're doing it most of the time, especially when you become more advanced. And then hopefully you stimulate and you have the necessary required the necessary rest recovery hydration and protein to accommodate that stimulation and produce the adaptation so your efforts to try to speed this process up are going to be a waste of time because the process is not up to you most of the time you're not even stimulating you're just trying to All right, let's see. What is a simple, practical way to make sure we're in a calorie deficit so we don't gain fat? Well, here's the thing. You guys need to realize you have to give something to receive something. Okay, You're not going to get something out of nothing. And what I mean by that is you're not going to get an improvement in your physique without putting forth any effort. Stop looking for a simple, easy way, okay? Nothing good in life comes simple and easy. And this is another, and this is no different. You have to put in the time to count your calories and weigh your food. Stop being lazy. Stop looking for shortcuts. Stop looking for the easy way out. This is why most people don't achieve shit in their life is because they're looking for the easy fucking way for everything there. Stop, stop looking for the easy way. First of all, the easy way is almost certainly ineffective. Second, the effort and discipline and sacrifice that you put into something is actually good for you. Yeah. It's a little annoying, but it's, good for you. So you look at like weighing and measuring your food and having to put all that effort in as an inconvenience and, and a bad thing, but no, the payoff is good. You're likely going to develop more discipline as a person, as a result. So if you're expecting to achieve your optimum physique by cutting corners and by putting in little effort in terms of weighing and measuring your food and calorie intake, you'd be pretty disappointed. It doesn't work like that. It's just so weird to me how many people just like are just looking for the simple. I, I don't mean to like, um, you know, I'm not like trying to give you a tongue lashing here. I'm just saying in general, this is not to you specific who answered the question. Um, I'm not like trying to be rude or anything to you. I'm just saying it's just it's just weird how so many people look for the easy the easy route. <laughs> it's just like that's just you know I'm young, but I said but I realized pretty early the easy route is not a thing. Okay. Been doing chest press machine, and it seems every time I go past 110, I end up with shoulder pain. Yeah, it's because you're you're breaking your form to accommodate more weight. Whether you you know whether you think so or not, the only reason you would 
get more pain is by producing excessive force, which means you're probably breaking your form down and producing excessive force and um, your rotator cuffs are suffering. You're not ready to go past 110. Stick with that. Stick with that weight longer. Got to remember, too, if you've been doing this for a while, you're going to stick at the same weight for quite a quite a long time. You're not going to go up 5, 10, 20 pounds every workout. It's going to be like you might go up 5 pounds every month at a certain point, maybe, if that. So keep in mind, um, your weight increases are going to slow down dramatically. Is it necessary to train the back shoulder, the rear delt? Um Individually, no. The rear delt is a small muscle group involved in every pulling movement. If you're a professional bodybuilder and proportions and symmetry meant your career and your livelihood, then yes. But most of you do not have the muscularity or the definition to need to worry about training smaller muscle groups individually. So don't even worry about it. Which leg exercises would you recommend? I've gone over this a million times. I'm not even going to waste my time. Um, okay. So... Interesting question. Um, arterial, hold on. Well, I'm not really sure you heard this, but it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so the more blood that is brought back to the heart through venous return, the better the venous return, the better the return through the arteries. So the veins bring the blood to the heart. The heart pushes the blood through the other side and distributes the blood through the arteries. More venous return means more arterial blood flow because of more stroke volume. It's that simple. I'm not really sure where you heard this. It might just be somebody who is not ready to admit that cardio is a complete waste of time, probably. But, yeah, no, it doesn't really make any sense to me. Why does it seem that volume destroys intensity in every single empirical study? What a gotcha question. List me some studies and I'll find and I'll see why. Um, because the studies conducted by, you know, the handful of exercise researchers that do most of the research on this topic have found that intensity destroys volume. So I don't know what the hell you're talking about you can do volume if you or volume you could you, basically what volume means is just more mechanical work it's not most volume is less metabolic work than a traditional high intensity workout it's just more lifting and lowering of the weight meaning mechanical work and mechanical work has absolutely nothing to do with stimulating mechanical tension, metabolic stress, or even muscle damage. So, Cody, if you want to list some studies, go for it, and I'll look at them. But it's kind of dumb to make a statement like that without providing any additional information. That's just stupid. What is the worst exercise technique you've seen someone perform in the gym? Um, there's two that are really fucking annoying when people do the, the fly and they go way back like this and then forward like this. <laughs> it looks so fucking stupid. Um, 
Also, when people are doing a pull down and they come up and then they swing the whole thing down and then they come up and they swing the whole thing down. So essentially their back muscles are not involved at all whatsoever. Their, their muscles are involved a little bit at the top included with momentum in order to gain enough momentum to bring it down. But when people do that bar pull down and swing it back and forth, it's just so ridiculous. What do you think of the triceps press machine? Is that a decent thing to work in for variation? Just been doing triceps extension, but thought that could be a change up. Um, I don't like it. I don't use it. I think it's pretty pointless. Just a regular extension with a cable is fine. Uh, every triceps extension machine I've tried, it's like there's not really anything. So if it's like the preacher curl one, there's not enough bracing to counteract the reactionary force in that. So it's like if it were to lock your shoulders down, say if a bar came down and locked all this down, and then you extended, that might help. But the fact that you, you can just extend and lift up, there's nothing to stop the reactionary force of elbow extension with your body in that chair. That's why I don't like it. Um, but when you're doing a standing triceps, your body weight is counteracting the reactionary force. That's why it's better. <sighs> How long does it take to get most of your genetic limit? Listen, two times a week, one times a week, three times a week. You're going to see your genetic limit within two years. You're going to see a lot of it within year one and then the remaining within year two, maybe three years. But I would say two years you're going to see most of your genetic limit. Because, like, when I started training this way, when I started, I was about 192 pounds. And within the first six months, I got up to about 205. And I haven't really changed much since. <clears throat> so I got up to 205, and that was about six years ago. And I stayed at that weight for several years. It was until just recently I added another five, six, seven pounds. And um, again, muscle growth is not linear. Why did I add more weight to my body? Um, probably because of reduction. In, so at that time, I was you know training 70 training sessions a week. So I was probably overdoing, overdoing it and overworking, not over training, but you know, that kind of stress will impact. And, uh, within the last year, I'm not training a bunch of people every day. So I think, um, a more relaxed stress-free lifestyle allowed my body to grow that additional five, six, seven pounds. Cause now I, I stick around 210. Mm. Your opinion on a three-way split? Stupid. Push free, pull free, legs. It's just so inefficient. I guess if you wanted to go to the gym every day, but that's just like it's equivalent to, you know, what's your opinion on mopping the kitchen floor with a toothbrush? I have a mop, but I would rather use a toothbrush. It's like, yeah, you'll probably you'll get the job done, but it's just you're choosing a more efficient method. Like, what's your opinion? Uh, I want to go to Chick-fil-A. I have a set of roller skates and I have a car, but I want to use the roller skates. What's your opinion on that? Well, it's going to take longer. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, you don't need to do it that way. If you like to go to the gym more frequently, which some people do, then, yeah, you could do a little more frequency, but... <sighs> Exercise is not effective for fat loss, but doesn't it help with burning extra calories on the days I overeat? No, because exercise does not burn nearly as many calories as people once thought. And also your um, resting metabolic rate will adjust almost equally to the amount of calorie expenditure during activity. So 
If you expend 500 extra calories, your resting metabolic rate is going to be reduced 500 calories. So that way you remain in a um, equilibrium in terms of energy balance. That's why it doesn't work. Obviously, extra activity works for really fat people. But I mean, um, for most people, it's just just don't over don't overeat. I mean, you gotta. It's very tough to try to get in really good shape. It's it's almost impossible to try to get in really good shape and maintain the habit of overeating. You've got to you've got to pick one or the other. I have no idea. How often should I train if I want to only maintain my current physique? Just once a week, probably be fine. It all well, depends on depends on your diet too. If your diet is perfectly in check, you could probably like crush yourself once every two weeks and maintain your physique. I would say once a week. Once a week with a good diet, you'll definitely maintain. Because I do that sometimes. I'll sometimes I just have a lot going on, and I'll just train once a week in order to just maintain and. I find uh, any less frequency than that, but you got to remember, you know, I'm 210 pounds of muscle and I'm kind of tall, like just, just below six feet. Um, it's a lot of muscle. <laughs> so if you, if, if, you know, in my case, if I pushed it out longer than seven, eight days, my body wants to get rid of this muscle because it's just pointless to have so much. So, you know, a 170 pound individual could probably wait a few weeks before they lose muscle. But if you're, you know, 210 pounds, um, your body's going to start getting rid of muscle quick because it's just way too much. So it really depends on, depends on the individual. Like if you took, um, I don't know, Phil Heath or something, and even with all the anabolics he's on, I mean, if he took 10 days off, he'd probably lose five pounds of muscle because he's got way too much. And his body, your, the human body does not want that much muscle. It will, it has myostatin. It will catabolize us. It will catabolize it quickly. But steroids are mostly anti-catabolic, so it kind of prevents some of that catabolization. Yeah, try to say that word, guys. Catabolization. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the th you know, the less muscle you have, the longer it's going to take to, without training, to get rid of it. Twenty years old, I had my first fitness modeling photo shoot in three weeks. Any tips on peaking? Yeah. So what I would do, I mean, honestly, what I what I did was, I don't know. Honestly, I didn't do anything, but it, I, I probably could have done it differently. I would, uh, you know, if you want to be leaner, um, you know, for the, the next two weeks, I would go in a very slight calorie deficit. Um, yeah, maybe even the next three weeks, a very slight calorie deficit in order to be as lean as possible. Um, and then a few days before the shoot, you want to cut sodium so that way you don't hold as much water. And um, I would say the day right before the shoot, the night before the shoot, eat a ton of sweet potatoes or something in order to uh, fill your glycogen stores up so you look more full. Because your, <clears throat> your muscles like 20% glycogen. And if you want them to look as full as possible, you need to fill your glycogen stores. I would eat something, I would eat boiled sweet potatoes, low in glycemic load. Um, keep your sodium low. Um, I, if you want to go really crazy, just like the, the day before or the night before, don't drink much water. How do I stop an addiction to bad snacks? Discipline. Just don't do it. 
willpower, discipline. It's so weird how many people lack discipline. Just don't need it. Or just don't have them in your home. Uh, so for this question, I would just go back a couple of live streams. I've answered this in a bunch of them. I'm just kind of skip through. You'll probably find the answer to this question. Um, it depends. It depends on what's more important. It depends on how frequently you're doing martial arts. Basically, just don't do resistance training the day you're doing martial arts. Um, incorporate a couple of days where you do neither resistance training or martial arts. Yeah, pretty much it. Just don't do them on the same day and just make sure you incorporate rest days. Yeah, stop eating. Just, yeah, just stop eating bad snacks. What's the, I mean, again, like, there isn't like some secrets. Just discipline and willpower. Take them out of your home. You want to know how the truth is? Do you want to know how I stop eating bad snacks? I just stop eating bad snacks. <laughs> it's so fucking easy. <clears throat> you heard of Adam Traore? He's a football soccer player. He says he doesn't lift a weight. He says genetics. Yeah, um, there are people like that. <laughs> I know. It's true. I'm going to look them up. Um, there are absolutely people like that. I uh, I mean, I was like that. I mean, when I was like 16, 17, um, I was super ripped. And I, yeah, this guy looks ridiculous. Holy shit. Man, that guy has a killer physique. Damn. Yeah, no, there are people like that. There are people who are very genetically gifted. I mean, yeah, he probably doesn't lift weights. Uh, why would he lie about that? Um, Drew Bay has a story that he says a lot. His uh, podiatrist, he said he, he took his wife into the podiatrist. His, his wife like broke her ankle or foot or something. And the guy comes in and he looked huge, jacked. And um, so uh, they were taking, so Drew Bay's wife, they were taking her cast off and they noticed that she didn't have any hair on her leg. And she was just like, yeah, I mean, I just don't grow hair. It's just how I've always been. And then the guy, the really jacked guy says, he goes, yeah, that's how I am with lifting weights. I've always been muscular, so I never had to lift weights. So just like an individual doesn't have to shave because she doesn't grow much hair, he doesn't have to lift weights because he's just naturally muscular. Um, this Adam Treor, I hope I'm saying that right, he's probably one of those people. Well, think about it. He's a professional football player, so he's obviously super genetically gifted. I mean, especially in Europe, the millions of people who play – play that sport out there, man, it's tough competition out there. Here in the United States, nobody really plays, you know, it's not as popular here as it is there, but the competition in the UK is stiff, so he's a genetic freak. I know it's unfair. I want to look up his height and weight. Does he look, he looks like my size. 5'10", 159! Get the hell out of here. This dude is 159. Okay, well, if he's 159, he sure as shit is not 5'10". He's got to be 5'7". You can't look that thick at 5'10", 159. Look at those legs. 159? No. All right, so they say he's 5'10", 159. No way. No way. He's probably but he's about 5'8", 165. Real weight. 72 kid. 
Yeah, no, there's something wrong with those stats. This dude looks my size, and I'm like, you know, almost, I'm, I'm like about six foot fucking 210. He looks my size. Jesus. Here, I'm going to share the screen for people. <clears throat> so this is the guy we're talking about who says he doesn't lift weights. Come on. Look at this guy. <laughs> That's hilarious. So if this guy got into bodybuilding, he could be a professional bodybuilder. Look at that. Look how long his biceps and muscle bellies are. He's got kind of a short triceps muscle belly. Short. Damn. See, and this is the genetic thing. Look how long his biceps are. They're ridiculous. Um, that's why they, they're so big. Look at this. Look where they attach. They attach right at the crease. That's why his arms are so big. So when we talk about genetics, then look at his legs. Look how long his muscle bellies and his legs are. Look at him. Yeah, this guy could be this guy could be a professional bodybuilder. That's crazy. Uh, years ago, I read a scientific book on HIT. It was better than anything else found online, written in German. The author is a professor for sports science in Germany. Hey, man, if you could find that, that would be great. If you could find that, share that. Oh, guys, just a reminder, too. Got some new content coming into this uh, hit home workout. So if you haven't already, lockdowns are coming. So luckily that thing's available. If you haven't already gotten the hit home workout, even if you don't do the hit home workout, there's a lot you can learn in that workout because there's a bunch of content in there that you could apply to your gym workouts too. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> Doug Brignol's biomechanic movements. Um, I haven't looked into them. Oh, all right. Well, apparently this guy does lift weights, but there are some people who don't and still look like that. Is there a minimum expectation for muscle gain, or could it be literally zero for some people? It's not zero um, for some people, but um, some people it's very low. I mean, it's definitely not, you know, it's definitely not that guy. Okay, if we don't feel like we exhausted a muscle with one set to failure protocol at home, what do you recommend for a second set? I just recommend waiting like 5, 10, 15 seconds, just doing it again. Don't do a one to two minute rest. That's stupid. That allows your muscle to recover. And the point is to fatigue your muscle. So I would wait 10, 15 seconds, just do it again. That's the best. That's the best approach there. You could do a drop set. Drop sets help. Um, yeah, I like to do drop sets. I mean, every now and then. So when my bicep tendons ache. So here's the thing. <clears throat> I like to do the chest fly machine, right? But the thing is, I've gotten so strong on that machine that I do almost all of the weight slow. All right. And this is a problem with some movements. I got so strong on the chest fly machine that my biceps tendons can't handle it. And they get, they, I hurt them when I use that much weight. And that's even when I'm doing a chest press first. 
So I do the chest press first, so that way I don't have to use virtually all the weight on the chest fly um, or the pec deck. Still hurts my biceps. So sometimes for biceps training, since my tendons are a little achy, I will do like a drop set, like not to failure. So I'll do a heavier weight, lighter weight, lighter weight, lighter weight, just so I can reach failure with a super light weight in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, so that's a good approach. Also, if you if you have an achy tendon or something, kind of use a heavier weight to get that initial fatigue set in and then keep dropping the weight. So that way you're not placing as much tension on your uh, tendons. Um, so I use I use drop sets if I have like an ache or something. But I'm going to have to take the pec fly out because I'm too strong with it. And it, it's killing my triceps or killing my tendons. Let's see. My resting blood pressure has gone up significantly since starting hit from 118 over 79 to 145 over 90. Workout regimen is the only thing that changed. I don't know. Did they use the right cuff? <laughs> Keep that in mind, too. Sometimes the doctors, sometimes you need a big cuff and they give you a small cuff because for a while I was getting my blood pressure taken and they said it was high. And they're using a small cuff on my 18 inch arm. So one time I got in there, I go, can you use the bigger cuff? And then he used the bigger cuff, and voila, my blood pressure was normal. So um, I don't know. Your blood pressure should go down from training. So unless you're just a really weird case, I don't know. Because you're going to increase coronary blood flow. If you add muscle, you're going to add, um, you know, uh capillaries and pretty much just you're going to add more or less piping for the blood to flow you're going to have lower blood pressure so i don't know that's weird bands and body weight okay don't use bands all right i'm going to show you why not to use bands okay so i'm creating a comprehensive eight week course <clears throat> with which the individual will learn everything there is to know about exercise, application, science, biomechanics, whatever. So here I'm going to share one slide with you. I probably shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to show you why resistance bands are fucking stupid. <clears throat> All right, is it working? Okay. So this is from my course that's coming out soon. So this is why resistance bands are stupid. You have a strength curve of your muscles. The amount of force your muscles can provide throughout the range of motion changes. For instance, with a curl, when your arm is fully straight, it can't produce much force. When it gets somewhere to the middle of the range of motion, it can produce the most force. And then when your palm gets closer to your shoulder and you fully flex your elbow, the amount of force drops off again. It looks like this. Most resistance is linear. It is the same resistance throughout the entire range of motion, which is why you'll notice sometimes you reach failure when you fully extend your elbow because the resistance is too high in the position where your muscle cannot produce very much force. You didn't reach failure. It's just an inadequacy of the machine. And so that's why Nautilus machines are very good because Nautilus machines, instead of having this fixed resistance, I wonder if I can do this. So Nautilus machines have resistance that looks, all right, I don't know what the hell that is. Hold on. Uh-oh. Can this stop? <laughs> How do I stop this? Um, okay, let me show this again. Curved connector. 
So Nautilus, I'm completely winging this. Um, I don't really know what the hell I'm doing. No. All right, you know what? Fuck it. Um, so Nautilus machines have this resistance curve instead of being flat follows this curve just like this. The problem with resistance bands is that resistance bands start with no resistance resistance bands start with no resistance and then get increasingly harder so you're not challenging your muscle where is the strongest now see how the resistance is relatively low and your muscle is the strongest with a resistance band the resistance is the heaviest again in a position of decreasing momentary ability decreasing force production this is why resistance bands are stupid because you're essentially not loading the muscle at all through here and you're mus loading the muscle very little in the position where your muscle is the strongest. That's why resistance bands are stupid. Don't use them. They don't. <laughs> Ideally, you want to challenge the muscle where it's the strongest. Make sense? Is full range of motion a myth? Yes. Even there was a re there was a recent study on biceps training, which found that extremely small range of motion with biceps um, produced the same amount of adaptation. Is elevated heart rate from running, for example, completely useless and no better than being sedentary? Well, the thing is. If you place a demand on your cardiovascular system through muscular contraction, it can stimulate an adaptation in the cardiovascular system. But resistance training does this safer, more efficiently, more effectively. Running does do it since you're using your muscles. Since you're placing a, a demand on your muscles, you're going to place a demand on the systems which support the muscle. So that's why your heart rate is elevated. Your muscles need more blood, oxygen, and nutrients and it needs to take the waste out more rapidly. So your heart beats more to push more blood in, and pull the waste out. That's why it beats more, to accommodate the demand on your muscle. Think about it this way. Um, heart rate doesn't necessarily mean you're placing a demand on your muscle. Say if you, you know, took 10 shots of espresso and your heart rate went through the roof, we wouldn't call that cardio, would we? Even though your heart rate is elevated. So elevated heart rate isn't a sign that you're training correctly. It's just a sign that um, your cardiovascular system is, it's just a side effect of using your muscles. And the reason your heart rate increases so much with running is because you don't have venous return. So with resistance training, you get so much more blood pumped back into the heart that the heart does not have to beat as fast because you have a higher stroke volume. But with resist with a uh, running, you don't have that venous return, and that's why your heart has to beat so much, and that's why people think that it's more effective because they don't understand how the cardiovascular system works with the muscles. <sighs> what are the best carbohydrates to eat? Uh, anything low in glycemic load. So I would just Google low glycemic load carbohydrates. What apps do you recommend to track nutrition and or fitness? There's no app to track fitness. I don't even know what that would be. Um, but you can use uh, Fitness Pal to track nutrition. If you calculate BMR, do you even consider activity levels? Well, not really anymore since, you know, study that study by Ehrman Ponser came out that showed that activity levels don't even affect your basal metabolic rate. So I wouldn't consider activity levels.
how much fiber should one consume each day? I think it depends on the individual. I don't really know. Just eat vegetables with every meal. You'll be fine. As someone who prefers to work out at a gym, which course would you recommend? Your hit course, hit unit course, home gym. What I would recommend is you email me at that email scrolling below and uh, give me your information, like your height, weight, uh, current diet habits, training history, goals, etc., and I will write you a workout plan. Similar to the home course, um, except there will be um, – gym exercises included in it and this goes for anybody else too if you want like a custom workout to use at the gym like the home course i will make them for you based on information you provide me through email um basically what that is is if you've seen the post about the coaching options basic basic advanced and premium that's the basic coaching option is you just email me all your information all pertainable information, and I will create a workout and diet plan based on your information. Um, so I would do that. All right. Tell me in a private session that if I'm going to eat ice cream, then it's better to eat before exercise. How come if you're saying now that exercise doesn't burn extra calories? Because you're going to use the glucose. It's not the calories, it's the glucose. So the ice cream is sugar and it has a lot of glucose. And if you do it before resistance training exercise, you're going to use that glucose to um, produce ATP. So you're going to eat it and then it's gonna, the glucose is going to be in your bloodstream. Then when you contract your muscles really hard, the muscles are going to use that glucose for the exercise so that way that glucose will not get stored as fat. It's got nothing to do with the calories. It's got to do with using that glucose so it doesn't get stored or converted into fat tissue. Thought you got me there, didn't you? <laughs> All right, meta-analysis of 15 studies indicating a virtual dose-response relationship. Okay, well, how about you cite it? Like, I <laughs> can't Google that. Jesus. Listen, here's the thing. Do what you want. You want to do volume? You want to do intensity? It doesn't matter. Uh, your genetics are going to determine how you look either way. So the end road is the same for everybody who's training relatively intensely and recovers properly. So if you want to argue to the death that volume is better than intensity, just go do volume and shut up. Like nobody cares. What do you do on off days to get exercise but also recover? I try to swim lightly and can't sleep unless I go hard and exhaust myself mentally and physically. Um, exercise is not the same as physical activity. Although exercise requires movement, this does not mean all movement is exercise. Exercise must be very intense, very fatiguing, and stimulate an improvement in muscle strength and size. Not all activity does that. Only exercise exclusively does that. So what you're referring to is recreation. What do I do for recreation? Nothing, really. I just, I have no desire to go do any of those activities. So I don't do anything personally. I don't like take my dog for a walk or whatever, but I don't do, I don't do anything for the sake of movement. That's just my personal preference. Uh, you don't need to. Um, it's just preference, really. If, if you want to, you can do anything that isn't lifting weights um, because it's got to be really intense and really aggressive in order to interfere with recovery. But if you really want to optimize muscle growth, you should probably keep all the extra activity to a minimum. When is my book out? My book is not out yet. I had to put it on the back burner because I have other things to do. <clears throat> All 
Uh, I'll text you back in a little bit. Let's see. Well, an aggressive calorie deficit to get extra lean before my studio. E2 catabolism. Muscle loss. Protein is high. And I'm training hard. Yeah, you don't want an aggressive calorie deficit. See, that's that's the whole trying to trying to control how much fat you lose. An aggressive calorie deficit will lead to muscle loss. It's not up to you how much fat you lose. If a bigger calorie deficit resulted in more fast or more fat loss, then why wouldn't you just not eat at all? All right. So you want a mild calorie deficit for a long period of time to reduce the amount of muscle that's lost because you're going to lose muscle. While you are getting really, really lean for a photo shoot or a competition or something, you're going to lose muscle. Your goal is to lose as little as possible. What is your opinion on keto carnivore? Well, we're not carnivores. <laughs> so there's no reason to eat like one. Keto works for some people. I don't particularly like it, but I know people who do keto and like it. So uh, carnivore, I think, is fucking pointless. Stupid. We're not carnivores. You got to remember that the fitness industry likes to just get attention because everything's been done in the fitness industry. So if you come up with something ridiculous, um, you're going to, Oh shit. My computer's about to die. All right. I'm going to answer one more question. Cause I have 5% <laughs> my computer left. We're coming on a while anyway. All right. Um, geez. Let's see. I'm going to just find the, the – I'm going to go through the questions, answer one more. I'm going to answer the question that will help people the most or the guy with the super chat. Um, yeah, if you could provide – I mean, if you could find that study, copy the link and paste it, I'd like to read it. Because the thing is, the, a lot of the times when they do studies, they don't – control rep cadence. They don't control time under load. Uh, they don't control whether or not these sets are taken to failure. You know, that, that's the thing. And so it's tough. So if you don't, con so for instance, if uh, you did a study and the individuals did not train to failure and the repetition cadence was not controlled, people doing lower volume are going to see a worse result. That's just what's, you know, that happens a lot of the times too. It's like, yeah, well, if you're doing one really shitty set, then more shitty sets are going to be more metabolic stress and it's going to result in better improvement. But if you do one extended set, you're going to get optimal metabolic stress and mechanical tension and all that and stimulate. <clears throat> Talking about. Um, okay, so one more. I'm going to try to find. <laughs> Surprise the people who sponsored you at one time haven't sued you for debunking fitness myths. You can't, you can't sue somebody for that. <laughs> um, it's not like, I mean, they could probably sue me if I claimed that one of their supplements had poison in it or something that would be like defamation but they can't sue me for having an opinion you know let's see Um, okay. Uh, yeah, some do. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. A bent over row has a straight resistance curve. 
They bench press as a straight resistance curve. A biceps curl with a barbell does not. That is a varying resistance curve. A triceps extension on the ground does not. That is a varying resistance curve. Um, but a bent over row in a bench press has a straight resistance curve. What the fuck are you talking about? Guys, don't. Here's the thing. Not to be arrogant, but stop trying to have a gotcha moment. You're not going to get one. You're not, you're not going to trick me. You're not going to fool me. Don't even try. I'm good. Like, <laughs> it's so funny. I love it. I love it when somebody tries to, tries to get me and tries to trick. You can't. It's impossible. I know this shit way too well. All right. So yes, a barbell row has a straight fucking resistance curve. Gravity is providing resistance down. The resistance doesn't change the higher the fucking bar comes off the ground. Same with the bench press. Any exercise where the weight is doing this off the ground has a straight resistance curve. Good try, though. All right. I'm going to end this right here. If you guys want um, a custom workout plan like the home workout, but you want me to create a plan just for you based on whatever equipment you have, your current diet, training history, whatever, just email me at the email address below and I can make you a custom diet and workout plan. All right. Um, also, you know, if you want, um, <clears throat> if you want uh, an effective workout plan, train at home, jvensfitness.myshopify.com and my computer is about to die in one second. So, see you guys soon.